Hello, my name is Ken, and I'm your podcast preacher. Welcome to my podcast, Deep Waters. This podcast is brought to you by Applied Strengths Ministry, where we believe working together in our strengths is the effect of working out the will and calling of God through our lives. The title of this message is Stand and Be Found Standing, Being Equipped for the Work of Ministry. Ha! Ah, now, I know that some of you have been with me from the beginning. So you know that equipping is the heartbeat of Applied Strengths Ministry. I really enjoy it when I run into someone every so often, and they are identifiably different. Now, when I say identifiably different, I mean they actually are different. They talk different. Sometimes they look different. They dress different. And you can see the maturity of Christ is on them because they have been equipped for the work of ministry, and then they have been sent to go do that ministry. They have completed goals behind them, more clarity of purpose. And they love God so much that they actually believe what he says, as it's demonstrated by their action. Now, this is the essence of faith. At the front side of what this is saying is that it can lead one to believe that you are being equipped to do stuff, to cast out demons, to heal the sick, to be used for miracle signs and wonders. But let's take a 360 look at what it is to be fully equipped as a saint of God, starting with being sure you know how to stand up on your own two feet with and in God. Ephesians 6, 13, 14. Therefore take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand an evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness. Now in the same book, that is Ephesians, it states in the fourth block that the fivefold ministers ought to be equipping the saints for the work of ministry. It also states as we travel down the sixth block that our battle is not of flesh and blood, and that we should be armored up. So as to give context as to why we should be found standing, let's take a look at our armory, which helps to keep us in a spiritually defensive posture. Ephesians 6, 10, 20. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. I think we need to hear that again. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood. So when someone comes at you, you don't go at them with your flesh. You go at the thing that's manipulating them in the spirit. I'll say it one more time. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Verse 14, stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. So when someone says something about you that hurts, remember it's a fiery dart. You have a shield that tells you that you're fearfully and wonderfully made. There goes that fiery dart. It just falls to the ground. Verse 17, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. And for me, that utterance may be given to me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains, that in it I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Now, some say that when Paul was in prison, he was looking at a Roman guard and looking at all of this armor that he was wearing, that he wrote this in his head. The difference is that he converted the armor that's used in the natural battles and converted it so that we could understand it in the spiritual realm. It's an amazing piece of work. And the bonus is you're told here that you're in a war, (laughs) whether you enlist it or not. Now, is it a coincidence that the armor of God discussed in the Sixth Street Compound comes after the apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers offering to the body on the previous block, that is, in the fourth chapter. No, because you can write a book 24 feet thick on chapter 6 alone. We need help getting it, don't we? So now wait a minute. It gets more interesting to the level as we go to the second block where we are told, besides those devil levels discussed in the sixth block, there is also a principality of the air, another devil that deals with things that go boom in the air. Yep. Let's just cut to the chase. This principality deals with thoughts, accusations, arguments, high-exalted things, and music. 
Okay, Ken, so I kind of get all that stuff until you get to the music part. What does he have to do with that? So this is a bonus run, but you're going to want to listen to this next bit. Ezekiel 28, 119. I'll preface it by saying this is a story about Lucifer, who fell from heaven and became Satan, the dragon, a demon. <clears throat> listen to the conversation. The word of the Lord came to me again, saying, Son of man, say to the prince of Tyre, Thus says the Lord God, because your heart is lifted up, and you say, I am a God. I sit in the seats of gods, in the midst of the seas. Yet you are a man and not a God, though you set your heart as the heart of a God. Behold, are you wiser than Daniel? There is no secret that can be hidden from you. With your wisdom and your understanding, you have gained riches for yourself, and gathered gold and silver into your treasuries. By your great wisdom and trade, you have increased your riches, and your heart is lifted up because of your riches. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, Because you have set your heart on the heart of a God, behold, therefore, I will bring strangers against you, the most terrible of the nations. They shall draw their sword against the beauty of your wisdom, and defile your splendor. They shall throw you down into the pit, and you shall die a death of the slain in the midst of the seas. Will you still say before him who slays you, I am a God? But you shall be a man and not a God. And hand to him who slays you, you shall die the death of the uncircumcised. By the hand of aliens, for I have spoken, says the Lord God. Now I'll be honest, it sounds like he's talking to a man right there, right? But as we go into verse 11, you'll see kind of a transition. Or it's just a continuation of the revelation. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, Take up a lamentation for the king of Tyre and say to him, Thus says the Lord God, You were the seal of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. You were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering, the sardius, topaz and diamond, beryl, onyx and jasper, sapphire, turquoise and emerald with gold. The workmanship of your trambells and pipes was prepared for you on the day you were created. You were the anointed cherub who covers. I established you. You were on the holy mountain of God and walked back and forth in the midst of fiery stones. You were perfect in your ways from the day you were created until iniquity was found in you. By the abundance of your trading, you became filled with violence within and you sinned. Therefore, I cast you as a profane thing out of the mountain of God and I destroyed you, O covering cherub. From the midst of the fiery stones, your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. You corrupted your wisdom for the sake of your splendor. I cast you to the ground. I laid you before kings, that they might gaze at you. You defiled your sanctuaries by the multitude of your inequities. By the inquiry of your trading, therefore I brought fire from your midst. It devoured you, and I turned you to ashes upon the earth. In the sight of all who saw you, all who knew you among the peoples are astonished at you. You have become a horror, and shall be no more forever. So was he okay losing his star power? They say that when uh, Lucifer worshipped before God, that all the stones that were in him, there was a light emanating out of them. And as they emanated out of them, they were just shooting across the universe. And it wasn't like the disco ball, per se. It was probably more like the aurora lights, something that's hardly imaginable with our human senses. So was he okay losing his star power? Now, he went into the nightclubs and draws the youth in like flies to sin. Right, I know. What were you thinking? What good thing can come out of a bar at 2 a.m.? Disco, disco duck. Remember that song? The duck was a demon. Nah, it was just a silly song. But you want to know how Satan might have looked in the description in the scripture above? Check out a nice dance club and tell me he's not the principality of the air, which is what started this journey in the first place. Okay, wait, wait, wait. So now you're saying we have armor, principalities discussed in at least two places in the Bible, and the command or purpose of those who occupy the office gifts to equip the saints for the work of ministry? Yep. Well, I thought it would be challenge-free to heal the sick. And what are the casting out the demons in authority of Jesus' name? Miracle signs and wonders has to be fun, right? But yes, and there's more. Now the response to these activations depends on your maturity. And your maturity depends on the depth of your relationship with God. An example is when the disciples, after being sent out into the ministry, came back excitedly and stated to Jesus, 
Even the demons listened to us. Now we know Jesus, no doubt in love, corrected them. But we can see that he did so because he wanted them to grow and to become more mature. Luke 10, 17, 20. Then the 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. So back to the armor. Why would we need armor when doing the Jesus stuff such as preaching the gospel to every creature? Because like in every battle, there are two sides, and so it is with our Christianity. But you may be surprised if you jumped ahead of my message and stated, it is a devil that fights against us. Well, yes, and it doesn't have to be this way, entirely. We see it in the following verse that Jesus stated that Satan has nothing on him. Therefore, when Satan or his demons showed up, they entered a losing battle, not only with Jesus, but they also do so with us. John 14:30. I will no longer talk much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming, and he has nothing in me. But so then, what about us, Ken? Well, this is what we are told in Ephesians. It states that by wearing the armor, when you are attacked, you will be found standing. Yep, it's that easy. You are not only being equipped for the work of ministry, for detecting the voice of the devil, to perform miracle signs and wonders, and to preach the gospel, but equally important is that you are being equipped to take a shot. And oftentimes, it will be from a well-intended friend, someone from church, or your very own parents, spouse, or kids. And when the arrows fly from the father of lies, that's in John, and when accusation rains down like acid rain, you want to be sure you were 360 equipped for the work of ministry. Now there's nothing more disheartening for a sailor who is standing on the battleship to fear a canoe. An example of a canoe in our days would be COVID. Jesus stated that he came to destroy the works of the devil, and as well, we should be equally as proactive. But remember, it is difficult to fight when you are knocked down, having no training or equipping to get back up. You can be found standing even if you get knocked down, as long as you get back up. A good many believers, when getting knocked down, are unable or unwilling to get back up. A backslider or someone whose soul draws back is not good with God. It's not over, but no doubt, until you repent of whatever you allowed to knock you down and keep you down, it will be near to impossible to take additional territory for the kingdom. Hebrews 10, 38. Now the just shall live by faith, but if anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in it. So while miracles, signs, and wonders are all the rage, and should be a part of every ministry, be sure you get your stand on and keep it on. Well, that's it for this message. Remember, it's not what you find wrong or disagree with regarding these messages, but what you can take away from it. Together we can do more to impact the kingdom than if we work alone. Let's flip the script and kill, steal, and destroy the works of the enemy and create space for the light of light to shine through into people's lives. Plant a seed and click on the like and subscribe button. Let's build this ministry together. Thanks and see you next time in deep waters.